We've seen how type parameters can be added to classes and traits. Turns out they can also be added to methods and functions. And so we want to look at how that works. We're going to use two different methods to illustrate that. Now, one of which is to put an apply method inside of our companion object. So we have the time of day values. We made the class for this have a type parameter. And as you should recall, a common use of a companion object, in fact it's not all that common to make the companion object have an app, though that can be helpful for certain testing purposes, such as the simple testing we want to do here, much more common usage of them is that they should have an apply method in them. And that apply method is used to create instances of the class. And so as a first pass, we might just try to create a version of apply, it doesn't take any arguments, and it just sets up one of these classes for us. So a new TOD values. We immediately run into problems here. Okay. First off, it says that this isn't a valid type, and that's because it has to have something specified in square brackets. But what would we put there? Okay, if I put something concrete like int, then, well, this compiles, but then all we could get would be collections of, of ints. What if I wanted to have strings? Turns out the proper solution to this is to add a type parameter to the apply method that then is also on the return type. Now, one of the things that I want to alter here is I'd like for there to be two versions of apply. One like this, which is a default, and one which allows the user to pass in the values that they want to use for the, the different times of day. So I'd like to make another one, def apply. Once again, we're going to have a type parameter A. And here, I'm going to use a var args argument. so that the user could say TOD values and then in parentheses specify you know, 3, 5, 7, 9, 6. And those would become the, the values in our, in our class starting at hour zero. Now in order to make that to work, I actually need to change our class up here. And I am going to change it so that it takes, in addition to the type argument, we'll take a regular argument for the array that we want to use. Now, if I do that, this down here has to get an array to make that happy. Uh, we'll talk in just a second about how I'm going to build that array here, but this opens up some, well, okay, so this one we can just take that and use the apply method there instead of calling new and we'll do the same thing for all of these. This actually opens a significant kind of problem with our program, which is, for example, I could now call new TOD values with array.fill of six of none. Oh, hopefully that, hopefully this strikes you as being problematic because there are still 24 hours in the day. This array was supposed to match the length of the day and so we shouldn't be able to do this. Now here we're in the companion object so uh, it would have access to that but we definitely don't want outside code to be able to create one of these and use an array that is of a different length. So that means that we need to make it so that the construction here is private. So that outside code cannot build the class directly, it has to go through the apply method. Okay, now with that in place, we can come back to our situation here. So they have passed in values. Maybe they did only pass in six of them. Okay. First thing I need to do is I need to wrap all of these values in options. So we'll create 
a val called ops and I'm going to run through the values that were passed in and I'm going to map all of them to make an option of that type and then we're going to convert that to an array okay the option here uh, is much like creating a sum except if the argument is null it'll wind up creating a none for us so this gives us a, a nice behavior in this situation now I want to give back a new time of day values of type A and then we need the array to be built using ops okay? but we have to make sure that it's of length 24 it's possible they could have given us fewer than 24 values it's possible they could have given us more than 24 values so okay let's put in an if here if the D or if our ops dot length is less than 24 well that means that they gave us fewer things and we need to add additional elements to this array and we can do that using the method called pad2 we want to pad this out to 24 elements and everything that hasn't been specified is going to be none else well what if it's we have an if ops.length is greater than 24 well in that case I need to only take the first 24 so let's come down here and let's do ops.take 24 and that'll throw away the rest otherwise we will use ops capitalize my V there and this is happy code okay so we have two apply methods one that will create a time of day values that's all nuns and another one that will create them wrapped around some values but we had to put type parameters on these so that it would work appropriately for any type the other function that we have that really could use type parameters is our combine method because our current combine method is actually quite restrictive if we can if we are in a TOD values that is of type A it only works with function that takes an A to an A or an A and an A and gives back another A that's limiting okay, it would be much nicer if it would take something of the type A and then possibly something of type B and give back some completely different type of type C well, turns out that's not too hard to do but we need to add two more type parameters in here so our combine now says that it has its own types B and C the other the other time of day values is of stores type B our function takes a type A and a type B and gives back a type C and then the TOD values that is the return should be of type C okay so let's look at these our option of A and that is our mismatch right there that last A needed to change to a C and then this is at least happy in the combine what about down here well now we run into this problem that the combine doesn't like how it's how it's written down here now there are two ways to fix this it turns out the problem is it doesn't know the type of O2 Okay, well in this case O2 happens to be an int and I could specify an int there and or sorry option of int I could be explicit about that and then this would work but the reality is the people who use this code don't want to have to keep specifying that type after all the option of int was part of writers writers said that it was a time of day values of int so I shouldn't have to re-specify that here this is actually another use for curried methods so it turns out if we come to our combine and instead of passing in two arguments in one list we pass in or instead of passing yeah two arguments in one list we pass in two separate arguments each with one value and then I come down here 
and for combine, I make that same change, all of a sudden the code works. Okay, and the reason for that is once again the localized nature of Scala's type inference. It looks at this first argument and then it's able to say, oh, because of this first argument, because it was, you know, uh, the writers was a time of day values of int, it can say, hey, b has to be an int. And because it knows that b has to be an int, when it gets to the second thing, it knows that this is an option of int, and then everything flows smoothly. This is actually why uh, a number of the, the methods in the libraries, for example, fold, use currying. It's actually to facilitate the, the type inference so that you don't have to specify the types on things. And that's basically where kind of the combine is very similar to a fold method. And so using a curried approach gives us better behavior for the people using this function.